Today, I have the honor and privilege to introduce Julia M. Ross, the Paul and Dorothea Torgerson Dean of Engineering. Inspired by astronaut Sally Ride and with good grades in her STEM classes, Julie decided to study engineering at Purdue University. But it wasn't until her co-op at Eastman Kodak that Julie fell in love with solving complex multidisciplinary problems in bioengineering. Motivated by the hands-on co-op experience, Julie went on to graduate with her bachelor's degree from Purdue and a doctoral degree from Rice University, both in chemical engineering. Her research focuses on the role of fluid mechanics plays in the formation of infections in the cardiovascular system. Julie joined the faculty of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County in 1995. As we all know, UMBC has recently embraced Virginia Tech's tradition of crushing UVA <laughs> in national sporting <laughs> events. Since then, she has served in a variety of roles, including chair of the chemical, biochemical, and environmental engineering department, and supported interinstitutional research initiatives as a special assistant to the provost. Julie last served UMBC as the Dean of Engineering and Information Technology. Late last summer, we were delighted when Julie joined the Virginia Tech community as the Dean of the College of Engineering. She holds tenured appointments in the departments of chemical engineering and engineering education. Julie is a member of the executive committee, committee of the Global Engineering Dean's Council, working closely with engineering deans from around the world to advance engineering education, research, and service globally. Julie is a fellow of both the American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineering and the American Council of Education. Without further ado, it is my great pleasure, personally and for the College of Engineering, to introduce Dean Julia Ross. Good morning. Well, thank you to everyone who are joining us on this gorgeous day today in Blacksburg on campus or remotely via the live stream from the National Capital Region, Roanoke, and beyond. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Welcome. Since joining the Virginia Tech community, I've spent a great deal of time getting to know university leadership, department heads, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and industry partners. It was crucial for the success of the college that I first and foremost listen, to learn about Virginia Tech culture, to listen and understand what makes this institution and college unique. Thank you for spending that time with me and for putting up with all my questions. Thank you for the warm, hokey welcome and for having difficult and important conversations about our future. Thank you for being transparent, open, and honest. And thank you for your tireless dedication that's critical to the success of the college and the university. I'm truly humbled and honored to lead this extraordinary college forward. During our time together this morning, I'd like to reflect back to you what I've heard and to share a few of the great many things we have to celebrate in the college. I will also share with you my thoughts on a collective vision, a synthesis really, of the many conversations I've had of where we can go together and how we can get there. As a land-grant university, we have a responsibility to produce the workforce of tomorrow and the fundamental and applied research to drive the economy and help it flourish. Our history is the strong foundation that we must build upon to create and imagine the global land-grant university of tomorrow to purposefully address grand challenges of today at their fundamentals and to face them with confidence. But in order to push beyond boundaries and become something more, to do more, we must be willing to take some risks and try some new things. And that can be difficult, particularly given the many challenges presented by the current higher education landscape. We're proud of how far we've come but we need to be willing to step outside our comfort zones 
and be the driving force for what we want to achieve, for our students to achieve. And let's never forget our future lies with our undergraduate and graduate students. At the end of the day, they are why we're here. We're in the business of transforming lives and changing the world. Our research is making a difference every day as we confront the most complicated 21st century challenges head on. Leading the research effort from our young faculty is this talented group. This year, the college is excited to have 11 National Science Foundation career and five Young Investigator Award winners who are transforming their fields. Will you all stand to be recognized? Thank you. Our faculty are on the cutting edge of research improving lives, imagining, and creating the future. Let me share just a few examples from around the college. Dan Stilwell, professor of electrical and computer engineering, along with Craig Wolseley, Kyriakos Van Vodakis, and Eric Patterson, all of the Kevin T. Crofton Department of Aerospace and Ocean Engineering, are studying the integration of unmanned underwater vehicles with manned hosts providing a preview of future naval capabilities. The Autonomous Systems and Intelligent Machines Laboratory, led by Azim Eskadarian, the Nicholas and Rebecca Deschamps Chair in Mechanical Engineering, is developing intelligent machines that can operate autonomously or semi-autonomously and interface with humans to perform useful tasks. Our sincerest thanks to alumnus Nick Deschamps and his wife Becky, who endowed the department head position earlier this year. Your generosity is helping Azeem and the department propel autonomous research forward. Mark Edwards, University Distinguished Professor in the VIA Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and his team of researchers have improved public health and well-being in cities like Flint, Michigan and Washington, D.C. by uncovering lead contamination in drinking water systems, identifying at-risk communities, and working to mitigate that risk. Nina Stark, also of Civil and Environmental Engineering and a 2018, or 2018 NSF Career and Office of Naval Research Young Investigator awardee. Nina is assessing the damage to coastlines after catastrophic events like hurricanes. Jonathan Borieko, Assistant Professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering and Mechanics with Brooke Kennedy, Associate Professor of Industrial Design in the College of Architecture and Urban Studies, designed a highly efficient fog harp with assistance with, from students in mechanical engineering and engineering mechanics. Apparatus like these are used to make clean water and caught the attention of researchers and media around the world. Nina Repepi and Michael Karmas from Mining and Minerals Engineering are improving our understanding of the geology and gas resource potential of deep shale reservoirs by drilling a 15,000 foot well in Southwest Virginia. Their work will produce research driven and industry proven best practices for monitoring a horizontal shale well. Our centers and institutes are thinking big and providing critical research infrastructure. Here are two examples. The Center for Power Electronics, also known as CPES, has been at the forefront of core power conversion technologies and research. With the retirement of Fred Lee, Dushan Boryevich of the Bradley Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering has taken the helm. By combining the center's expertise with a global consortium of companies and government research sponsors, Dushan and the CPES team are seeking solutions for the new power grid of the 21st century. I'd also like to note that Dushan was inducted in the college's Academy of Engineering Excellence last Thursday night. He is the first current faculty member elected to this distinguished group of alumni. Beginning with a vision in the late 90s to create an institute focused on interdisciplinary research, the college and university made strategic investments in what is now the Institute for Critical Technology and Applied Science, commonly known as ICTAS. ICTAS recently celebrated its 10th anniversary and now encompasses three buildings on the Blacksburg campus, space in the National Capital Region, and growing collaborations in Roanoke. 
It helps drive research at the university by supporting interdisciplinary teams, providing funding, shared workspaces, and importantly, staff support. This year, Stefan Duma, a world-renowned expert in impact biomechanics, accepted the role as institute director. His own work has transformed the study of head and eye injuries and driven the development of safer equipment and procedures in sports, automotive and consumer products industries, and the military. Thank you, Stefan and Dushan, for your leadership. Located outside Petersburg, Virginia, the Commonwealth Center for Advanced Manufacturing is a partnership between industry, government, and Virginia academic research institutions focused on advanced manufacturing research and innovation. With leadership from Jaime Camelia, Grado Professor in the Grado Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering, who serves as Chief Technology Officer, CCAM provides a nexus for translational research with 29 corporate partners and four other state universities. Together, we accelerate the adoption of new manufacturing technologies with research that spans across multiple engineering disciplines. With this center, we can leverage experiential learning and practical opportunities that demonstrate impact and our value to society. Thank you, Jaime, for your leadership. Leveraging CCAM, a partner with Rolls-Royce, led to new technology developed by Ramesh Batra, Professor of Engineering Science and Mechanics, and Gary Pickrell, Professor of Material Science and Engineering. The work continues to be advanced by Rolls-Royce employees, Taylor Blair and Sunny Chang, former material science engineering graduate students. Rolls-Royce estimates that the advances provide cost savings of a million dollars annually from reduced manufacturing time. This is an important example of how the college creates impact and value for partner corporations. So how will we move research forward? What areas should we consider? As many of you know, the university has designated a number of destination areas and strategic growth areas. The college participates in all of them and will continue to do so. But there is more we should consider and I'll outline a few examples here. The Virginia Tech CCAM Rolls-Royce Partnership presents an opportunity and also an example for how we might further grow the impact of our research and education. The needs of the advanced manufacturing industry are now driven by the fourth industrial revolution known as Industry 4.0. The development of the smart factory involving the integration of automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies. Work in cyber physical systems, the internet of things, cloud computing and cognitive computing are all key. We have the opportunity to leverage our investments in advan advanced manufacturing in coordination with our strengths in the Hume Center, the Discovery Analytics Center, robotics and autonomy to address these challenges while also advancing the fundamental underpinnings. This should be done in the context of also aligning education and research with our industrial partners through integrated professional graduate offerings that yield further investment in research. If we choose this path, we will leverage professional education net revenue to make strategic investments in our research. This approach will directly benefit the state economy, provide new educational opportunities for working engineers, and generate new resources for direct investment into our fundamental research enterprise. Another area with great potential for our college is in health and medicine, building on the growing emphasis in the life sciences at Virginia Tech. We're already actively collaborating with partners at the Virginia Tech Carilion Research Institute, the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine, and the Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine. And we want to do more. Very few institutions have strong engineering, medicine, and veterinary medicine. This trifecta of program and research strength provides incredible opportunity for both basic and translational research in biomedical science. 
Consider the success of biomedical engineering and mechanics faculty, John Robertson, Rafael Davalos, and Scott Verbridge, in collaboration with John Rosmani, a neurosurgeon and professor of neurology at the Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine, who are part of a team awarded a $9.2 million grant from the National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, to investigate approaches to treating glioblastoma, the most common and deadliest form of brain cancer in adults. Aligning with university priorities, a greater focus on health-related research will allow us to build new programs, provide new opportunities for our faculty, establish new collaborations, and significantly increase our funding from the National Institutes of Health to further diversify our funding portfolio. With the Hume Center for National Security and Technology, led by Charles Clancy, Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering, the Discovery Analytics Center, led by Niran Ramakrishnan, Professor of Computer Science, and several engineering departments located in the National Capital Region, we're looking to take advantage of the proximity to industry and government to expand our presence in the greater Washington area while leveraging our strengths in Blacksburg. And finally, as we continue to imagine Virginia Tech's future as a global institution, we look to our global partnership with the University of Nottingham as an example of what works. For over 10 years, we have partnered with Nottingham and now have more than 30 faculty, including joint faculty, and over 45 students from Virginia Tech and the University of Nottingham working together in eight research areas, ranging from human factors and virtual reality to manufacturing, power electronics, and gas turbine propulsion. As we continue to grow and strengthen this important partnership, we will also look to the future for other strategic opportunities abroad. Glenda Scales, our Associate Dean of Global Engagement and Chief Technology Officer, and Jack Lesko, our Associate Dean of Research and Graduate Studies, thank you for your efforts supporting our global priorities. In addition to leadership by dedicated faculty, our talented graduate students are central to all of these amazing research efforts. They are the ones in the lab every day, making discoveries, repeating experiments, crunching data. Next week, I'll celebrate the current class of graduate students at my first spring commencement at Virginia Tech. With the graduate school, we expect to graduate approximately 119 doctoral and 340 master's engineering students. Let me tell you about one of those students, the college's outstanding graduate student of the year, Alexandra Heiler. Alexandra, a doctoral student in biomedical engineering and mechanics, earned a degree in chemical engineering before beginning her graduate education journey at Virginia Tech. Her work focuses on women's health, specifically on ovarian cancer, and was recently published in PLOS One. After graduation, Alexandra will continue her research at Cyto Recovery, a company currently headquartered in the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. Congratulations to Alexandra. Please stand and be recognized. We have so much to celebrate, but looking forward, we need to make sure we can fully support students like Alexandra with multi-year offers for PhD students at the time of admission. This will be critically important to our ability to remain competitive in attracting the best and brightest graduate students to our programs. Our program offerings must be distinctive and differentiate us from our competitors. We must broadly prepare our graduate students for both positions in academia and industry. Our graduates pursue a diverse array of career paths, and we must be flexible enough to support the breadth of their dreams. In order to meet the needs of industry, we also need to consider our portfolio of graduate programs for working professionals. Whether in the National Capital Region, Blacksburg, or elsewhere, how can we better need, meet the growing demand for graduate education? How will we do all of this? Well, we will certainly need to work together in intentional teams that focus our research in strategic areas, 
aligning our hiring plans with our priorities. Stronger and comprehensive corporate engagement that includes integrated research, talent pipeline development, and philanthropy will be key to our success. Working closely with LINK, the university's newly structured business engagement center, led by Brandy Salmon, we're expanding existing corporate relationships to include growing industry-sponsored research, recruiting, and technology commercialization. We're excited that engineering alum Justin Watts has joined LINK as Associate Director of Business Development. Justin will support the College of Engineering in these efforts. As a college, we will also need to strategically invest in research infrastructure, including collaborating across campus to develop core facilities. I look forward to working with my fellow deans and the institute directors to bring this vision to fruition. Space, of course, is also a significant challenge for us. To be competitive with top programs and to perform state-of-the-art research, we need state-of-the-art facilities across all of our engineering disciplines. So I'm thrilled that we're moving forward with the renovation of Holden Hall, which houses mining and minerals engineering and material science engineering. The building is old, built in 1940. With state and philanthropic, philanthropic support, the college will commence with renovations in summer 2019 to transform Holden Hall into a state-of-the-art facility for the future. And then, next on the list of space renovation will be the long-awaited Randolph Hall. Over the coming year, my office, together with the central administration, will continue to push this important priority forward to secure state funding. To do all of these things, we'll need the support of the university, department heads, the development team, and critically, the talent of Ed Nelson, Associate Dean of Administration and Chief of Staff. Ed, thank you for your hard work and your commitment to Virginia Tech. Next week, we will also be graduating approximately 1,400 new engineers and computer scientists from our undergraduate class. One of those students is our outstanding undergraduate student of the year, Michael Sherber. Michael is graduating with honors in electrical engineering and is a member of the Corps of Cadets, serving as squadron commander in Air Force ROTC and a platoon leader. As an undergraduate researcher, Michael works on dense plasma focus devices for the nuclear engineering program based in mechanical engineering. Among numerous accolades, Michael is a William C. McAllister Scholar and a 21st Century Studies Fellow. After graduating, he'll serve as a Developmental Engineering Officer in the Air Force Institute of Technology, where he'll begin his graduate studies. Michael, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> and thank you to Bill McAllister for your support for students like Michael. We're excited that this fall we'll be celebrating the 20th anniversary of the William C. McAllister Scholarship. Michael's a great example of what we need from 21st century engineers. We need students that commit to serving their community and the world, grounded in ut prosum, making an impact on society. As with Michael's example, our students need to learn in a way that is immersive, practical, and hands-on working to solve complex problems that can't be found in a textbook. We must embrace a supportive culture that connects classroom and research in the lab to experiences in the real world. And we need to remember that the learning that happens outside the classroom, experiential learning, can be as powerful as what we teach. Here are some examples of what we're doing. We're providing global experiences with industry and universities abroad in the Rising Sophomore Abroad program organized by engineering education. By giving students a taste of an international experience in countries like Australia, China, India, and New Zealand, we can increase students' comfort level with global travel and help them develop a more global perspective. If you've ever visited the Ware Lab, you know the work our students doing there is just incredible. 
Just recently, David Wilson, president of Toyota Racing Development and mechanical engineering alum, came back to visit with the Baja team, which is company sponsors. Because of that sponsorship, the Baja team can compete with other US and international teams using skills they learned in a book and translating them into the lab. Thank you to Toyota Racing and all of the countless industry partners that make these opportunities for our students possible. Our Chemi car team competed in the Mid-Atlantic Regionals at Princeton University, qualifying for the national competition at the AICHE annual meeting in Pittsburgh this fall. The team is made up mostly of chemical engineering students and one material science student. Congratulations. We'll be watching and crossing our fingers. In March, an interdisciplinary student team from computer science, computer engineering, and business information technology from the Pamplin School of Business celebrated a victory at the fourth annual Deloitte Foundation Cyber Threat Competition for their analysis and incident response approach to a simulated cyber attack. Christine Ash, a junior biological systems engineering student, is co-oping with Sam Adams. She began her work in research and development and was eventually promoted to brewing supervisor. In her own words, Christine says she's walking away with confidence, adaptability, time management, and prioritization, skills that are applicable for the rest of her life. Our students should all have this type of experience. These extracurricular activities, study and research abroad, service learning, entrepreneurship experience, undergraduate research, internships and co-ops, participation in design teams, these are all known collectively as high impact practices. They have a profound impact on students and their development as engineers, and we are doing them all. We know how to do this. We've been doing it for a really long time. There's really no need for radical change. But we must scale our activities so that all of our students have the opportunity to participate in at least one high impact experience. The National Academy of Engineering endorses the Grand Challenges Scholars Program to promote this type of learning. Establishing a program at Virginia Tech, something I advocate, is one way to raise awareness among our students and to move us forward in scaling what we already do. However, to, make, to do this important work, to make it possible, we'll need the support of industry and our generous donors. We will also need to take what we learn and use it to transform our curricula. This will ensure that all our students benefit. It's important for our departments to learn from one another and to translate and apply the research, learning, and engineering education to transform our programs and our pedagogy. This is how we will ensure we have some of the most innovative and effective programming in the country. Here are some examples of how we're already moving in that direction. In an effort to broaden the range of careers students can pursue and the pool of students who choose the discipline, the Bradley Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering is changing both its curriculum and its undergraduate culture. With help from an NSF Revolutionizing Engineering Departments grant, ECE has reformulated every level of its undergraduate experience, creating a dozen new majors and offering a seven course base a sequence common to all electrical and computer engineers. They will be emphasizing the breadth and strength of the department's subdisciplines. With 90 faculty in the department, they are among only a handful of programs across the country that can offer majors in so many subdisciplines. And they are working to articulate the undergraduate and graduate program into, I'm sorry, the undergraduate program into the graduate program in order to build a sustainable pipeline of students. This academic year, the Kevin T. Crofton Department of Aerospace and Ocean Engineering completed a three-year redesign and reinvigorated their curricula to answer the needs of industry and government. 
and because students said they needed more flexibility in the design of their curriculum. This flexibility is a key recommendation for improvement that I hear from our students and our alumni. As a result, the department now has nine concentrations, five in core technical areas and four in application areas. And as you, you have probably seen in the news recently, computer science and cybersecurity challenges are everywhere. We're fortunate at Virginia Tech to have computer science in the College of Engineering, as it has become central to much of what we do. Moving forward, it will be important to grow our computer science department to enable it to integrate across the college and across the campus. From artificial intelligence to data analytics to blockchain technology, our enterprise needs to reflect the importance of computer science on the world of emerging technologies. So how will we expand these initiatives to scale in the college? It will certainly take additional resources at the university level and investment in the College of Engineering. To accomplish these goals, we will need more state-of-the-art space to expand student design and maker spaces, and we'll need more financial support for our students and the faculty and staff who teach and support them. The university's current plan to grow to 30,000 undergraduates is an opportunity for us. This overall growth offers important rewards, including increased resources to the university and administrative efficiencies of scale. We will look forward to very modest growth in the College of Engineering around select programs, such as construction engineering management, and a new undergraduate major in biomedical engineering, which we hope will be approved at the state level very soon. How will the college support these efforts? The work of our advancement team, led by Jeremy Weaver, will be critical. Jeremy joined us in January, and we're thrilled to have him here to complement our strong communications, alumni relations, and development team. After a record-breaking uh, fundraising year last year, we're looking to continue to build on our momentum. We must grow philanthropic support for the college. In doing so, we'll work to develop a more distributed advancement effort that includes collaboration and integration with our departments. One of the ways the university is trying to do this is through increased donor participation. While Hokie alumni have great affinity for the university, there is not a direct correlation reflected in philanthropy. This spring, the university held its first ever giving day with the ultimate goal to increase participation. It was a huge success. The college efforts resulted in over $200,000 from 761 donors, of which 135 were first-time donors. These efforts will help achieve the president's goal of 22 by 22. That's 22% alumni participation by 2022. Many donations went directly to departments. For example, the Myers Lawson School of Construction received a $10,000 gift from an engineering donor. The funds will support the Kevin P. Granada Safety Research Program and will be used to save the lives of construction workers through innovative applied research. Congratulations to the Myers Lawson School and thank you to Aaron Edwards, Angela Mills, and Lindsay Hawk and all of the advancement crew for demonstrating the true impact of the collaborative advancement model. My vision for the College of Engineering is one of inclusive excellence, where students, faculty, and staff from all backgrounds are welcomed and supported to reach their highest potential. It's very competitive to get into Virginia Tech these days. All of our students are quite capable of becoming engineers if they do the hard work. So let us challenge the weed out mentality and culture of exclusion that has historically been a part of engineering. And rather, let us be known for very high standards and expectations as a place of excellence and a place that is welcoming, that supports the success of all students. How might we do that? 
The New Horizons Graduate Scholars Program is one way. Started as a pilot program in 2012, New Horizons grad addresses recruitment, funding, transition, and support for graduate students from diverse backgrounds. Through these efforts, we've significantly increased the diversity of our doctoral programs. We look forward to welcoming 36 scholars next fall, our sixth cohort, and the largest yet, surpassing the previous class of 24. With a total of 160 scholars in the program since inception, we need to expand these efforts so that even more students can participate. Thank you to Jack Lesko, Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Studies, and Catherine Amelink, now with the Provost's Office, for your leadership and commitment to inclusive excellence. We must work with our faculty, staff, and students to think deeply about what it means to live by our principles of community to provide a culture and climate that's inclusive. The Inclusive VT initiative at the university is providing spaces and opportunities for these conversations. In the college, it will be important for us to promote and encourage broad participation. We will also consider how we onboard new members of our engineering community. Next year, we'll be implementing new opportunities for professional development for faculty and graduate students around the mentoring relationship. Our goal is to develop a suite of programming over the next several years. Our Center for the Enhancement of Engineering Diversity, SEED, is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And thanks to the longstanding leadership and wisdom and vision of Bev Watford, the Center's Director and our Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, SEED continues to create an inclusive environment to support undergraduate students. The Living Learning Communities, Hypatia and Galileo, which bring together first year and upper class engineering students in a residential environment, building a community of peer support, are one notable success. SEED also fuels the pipeline of students into engineering with innovative pre-college programs, bringing women and underrepresented minority students from all over Virginia to Virginia Tech. We know these initiatives work, but we cannot expand and scale them without state and philanthropic support. So today, I am absolutely thrilled to announce a very specific way that we'll be expanding our efforts with new philanthropic support from the May Family Foundation established by Joe May, an electrical engineer from the class of 1962. With a $5 million gift, the May Family's generous donation will establish a multi-year program to increase the number of first generation students, students who are the first in their family to go to college, from Virginia who enroll in and graduate from Virginia Tech. I think we can all agree with Joe, Bobby, Beth, and Elaine that the ability to positively influence a student's educational path to engineering begins way before their freshman year at Virginia Tech. So with this gift, we will connect with students and their families beginning after the ninth grade year, working with them throughout their high school careers, and then supporting their transition into Virginia Tech through the completion of the first year in freshman engineering and general engineering. This multi-year engagement with first generation students will transform the way we think about recruiting and supporting all of our students. Joe and his family couldn't be with us here today to celebrate, but they are watching on the live stream. Can everyone please give the Mays a big round of applause to show our appreciation? <laughs> My sincerest thanks to the May family for this amazing support. This is so exciting to me because I sincerely believe that we need every bright, smart, young person out there with an interest in engineering working to solve our greatest challenges. The best way to do that, to be really creative, is to have people coming together from all different backgrounds with all different life experiences, bringing all different perspectives to the problem. Colleagues. This is our time to do the hard work. We need the Virginia Tech College of Engineering 
to look more like the demographics of the Commonwealth of Virginia. If we are to really serve and fulfill our promise as a land-grant university, we must diversify our faculty, staff, and student body. So as you can see from my comments here today, there's much to celebrate, and there's also much to do. We need to be bold, and we need to take some risks. But let's not be afraid of failure, but rather try some new things, take measure of our success, and then try again. We are, after all, engineers. To be successful, we will need more families like the Mays, dedicated and passionate about the hard work we're doing, for the college to be a top philanthropic priority. And we'll need strong and thoughtful leadership. We're fortunate in the college to have an incredibly talented and dedicated group of department heads. They're the ones on the front lines every single day, working with and supporting our faculty and staff to move our most important initiatives forward. Department heads, please stand and be recognized for your leadership. The conversation today is just a beginning, meant to inform our planning as we discuss and debate opportunities and priorities and challenges. We all have a role to play in our future success. And I'm confident that together we're stronger. Together, we can propel the collective vision for the college forward for our students, for their future and ours, for Virginia and the nation. Together, we will be the very best Virginia Tech we can be. Let's get to work. So I'd like to thank you all for being here today. What better way to get started than with some community and a little bit of sustenance. So please join me in the Holtzman Alumni Center for refreshments and to continue the conversation. Thank you.